I'm going to welcome Zanita Renato Jones to the Prolific Pulse Poetry Podcast and YouTube. Thank you so much for coming to visit with us today. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Let me tell you a little bit about Zan. We're going to call her Zan from now on. Um, she is an author of Poetic Forecasts, Reflections on Life Purposes, Storms, and Triumphs. She's also a contributing author in the upcoming Voices of the 21st Century, Resilient Women Who Rise and Make a Difference, which is scheduled for publication in February 2021. Believing that every word shared is an opportunity to love, Zanita began writing poetry as a freshman in college. Her writing will agitate, inspire, comfort, and provoke empathy and positive thought. She's retired a human resources leader with 29 years of career spent at the University of Colorado, where she ultimately served as a senior assistant to the vice chancellor for administration and the director of human resources. One of her many proud moments at the university was being recognized in 2007 as one of the women who make a difference. How about that? Hmm. Since retirement, she simply enjoys life in her circle of family and friends. And to remain positive, she actively writes poetry, quotes, and other creative expressions. Zanita, also known as Zan, is a wife, mother, and proud grandmother who lives in Westminster, Colorado. All right. And I mentioned your book, and I'm going to share that on the screen here. There we go. You see that here. It's also your website, San Expressions. So that's where you can go and find the book and you can even get autographed copies. So how about that? That's awesome. pretty awesome. Congratulations on your publication of your book and your Thank upcoming you, book publication as well. Thank you. So you are spending a lot of time writing poetry and writing quotes. Can you tell us a little bit about what the course of your day is like? Oh boy. It changes from day to day. Um, because I'm a grandmother, a proud grandmother with family living in Colorado, I do help with my grandchildren, help my children with the grandchildren. Uh, I live with my husband, uh, who's also retired. He retired from United Airlines. We like to travel. But this year has been, well, last year was quite different. We have not traveled since a year ago today, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, we take annual trips to Hawaii to celebrate nice. our anniversary. Uh, we got married in Hawaii and we love it. So this is, today we would be there. <laughs> we would be oh. in Hawaii were it not for COVID-19. So, so we're it's your anniversary time. It's anniversary time, February 4th, oh, 24 years. Happy anniversary. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll celebrate it here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I write. Um, if anyone asked me, I might be getting ahead of you, Lisa. I don't know. But if someone, someone were to ask, when do I write? I write all the time. Mm -hmm. I write when the, when the words come. I pray about my writing. I pray specifically when I want to um, pay tribute to someone or celebrate someone. I ask God to give me words. And that's one of the, one of the means of um, writing and creating. The second is mm -hmm. when I experience something that's really, really meaningful or feelings. If the words or the phrases come, I write. Mm -hmm. um, I write to process feelings. Mm -hmm. So that's what my day looks like. It's not spent with a schedule. I don't have mm -hmm. a schedule. Um, I follow the lead. I follow mm -hmm. the lead of my inner voice. That's mm -hmm. what my day looks like. That sounds very familiar what my day would be like <laughs> as well. <laughs> well, I get woke up about three or four in the morning by some oh. voice. Do you ever oh, have that early morning inspiration? Liz, that's my favorite, but I have to tell you what I do, Lisa, because I like sleep as much as I like poetry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> if I get if I get a poem or 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 a topic, I I can write it 
with my eyes closed. I can write mm -hmm. notes with my eyes closed right. so I don't lose them because I'm exactly. sure you, you, you know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. So if I get that inspiration in the middle of the night, I make a note and I revisit it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I yeah. keep a little paper beside my bed and write down yes. a few things and yes. um, or I won't remember. I, I can't record it in my brain. It has to be written somewhere. But, I understand. Yeah. Same. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, um, tell us a bit about this project that you're working on, that you've been working on. It's coming out this month, actually. The project with the voices book, we call yes. it for short. This is uh, Voices of the 21st Century. Uh, this is a collaborative book that was um, created by the CEO and founder of the Women Speakers Association, Gail Watson. Mm -hmm. This is the fourth edition, and this is my first time joining the book. And oh, I'm great. excited. There are 30, there are 40 co-authors from around wow. the globe. And the stories of resilience will touch everyone. It's not mm -hmm. just for women. It's written by women. We're sharing our stories uh, to inspire, uh, to create change, uh, to motivate. And it's very exciting. What, what has me pumped is one of my poems, and I'm going to share that poem uh, today. Uh, I could do it later, or I could do it now if you like. But my poem, What Matters, is featured at the beginning of the book. It is such an honor, such an honor. Would you like to read that poem now? I would love sure. to hear it. Sure, okay. I will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What matters? If my eyes met your eyes in the midst of a crisis, would their shape and color concern you? If my hands massaged your aching body, would you be more concerned about the pigmentation of my skin? If I gave blood to replenish your low supply, would you need to know that I looked like you? If you were drowning and I dove in to assist you, would you reach toward me if you knew I were gay? If you were hearing for the first time in your life, would you need for my voice to speak English only? If your loved one lay sick and dying, would it matter to which God I prayed? If I donated money to support your favorite cause, would you refuse it if you knew how I voted? If you asked me to walk a mile in support of humanity, would you get impatient if I use my wheelchair? If I said no and you assaulted me anyway, are you less guilty because I waited to report? If my family seeks asylum in the USA, are we less welcome because our border is to your south? If the police force keeps killing unarmed citizens, would you demand justice if they are African American? With civil unrest during this global pandemic, trust me, soon we will realize what matters. Uh, that is deep, profound, excellent. Hmm. Touches Thank on you. so many things, touches on so many things that are going on in the world today. Yes. And, and Lisa, I wrote that poem in 2000. 
2000? In 2000. Wow. And you can tell for, from the lyrics that I added to it. I added to it this spring mm -hmm. uh, to incorporate some of the things we're dealing with today, like right. the, Me Too, the Me Too movement and mm -hmm. the police, the, the protests and what's happening in the world today. We're going in the wrong direction, but yeah. I have hope. I have hope. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna make a difference and change for mm -hmm. the better. Yeah, I have hope as well. Great. That things are going to change. Um, they've got to. They've got yes. to. Absolutely, the direction we're going. Yes. Well, what's it like in Colorado with that? Is do you see much um, unrest in that area? That's a total part of the country I'm not familiar with. Yes, you're in. You're on the East Coast, correct? I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Colorado is, first of all, a beautiful place that I absolutely love. Um, I don't like being cold, but I love mm -hmm. Colorado. So I've been here ever since I came in 1975. Um, we're not. We we do see some unrest. We do see protests as you have across the country, uh, much needed peaceful protests. Um, we've got issues all around the country. We're not immune in Denver. Mm -hmm. We're not immune in Boulder, nor Westminster, which is the city I live between Denver and Boulder. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had incidents that went national because of what happened. So in answer to your question, yes, We've got issues in Colorado and we have work to do. Yeah, same here in North Carolina. And yes, I'm in Raleigh and we had mm -hmm. you know, some a lot of unrest here for a while. And mm -hmm. time to time we ended up getting on curfews. Um, yes. Been yeah. calm since January. So um, well, just you February. Know, <laughs> I believe it had to happen to wake us up so that people are aware that we've got work to do. Mm -hmm. Well, if we don't have a wake up call now, I just, we must be really asleep. That's right. <laughs> and what I say is what matters, love absolutely. and compassion. Mm -hmm. That's what absolutely. matters. That is mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's absolutely 100%. Yes. Totally agree with you there, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now tell us about your book. My book. I have to hold it up. Poetic forecast, reflections on life's promises, storms, and triumphs. This is a collection of poems um, that I've written over the course of 40 plus years. When the pandemic hit and we were quiet, I decided to publish. And I went through the process of selecting poems. I have many more, but the ones that I chose to include in this book are reflective of what I believe people need to hear now. Mm -hmm. um, the name of the book, um, it, it, it's analogous to what the chapters are analogous to weather forecasts. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a chapter about the sunrise and a chapter about partly cloudy or, or severe thunderstorms. Um, there are many that reflect the moods and experiences we go through in life. There are happy poems. There are sad poems. There are poems of inspiration. And one of my favorite parts is to celebrate people. Um, I've got poems. Um, my oldest sister passed away early and she did not live to be 50. And so in the book, I include a series of points that I dedicated to, my, to myself and my siblings, my four siblings, when we each turned 50. So I have a series of points written at 50 to honor my sister, Rita, who passed away. I also have um, poems that um, deal with grief. Uh, 
Lisa, I think that's kind of interesting because I've I've enjoyed reading some of your writing and oh, I noticed you. that there's poems of grief. And I believe when you write about what you're feeling, it helps you move through the process. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. so that brings me to another poem that I might, if it's okay, mm -hmm. I'd love to share a poem that I wrote when my mother passed away, nine Absolutely. months after my sister. Oh my. Uh, yes, I believe she died of a broken heart and uh, it was totally unexpected. And in order to move through the pain of that, knowing that she had filled me with enough love to sustain me, mm -hmm. I wrote a poem to, to my mother to express my feelings. So if, if you're okay with it, I'd love yes, to share that poem now. Do. Because yes, I know do. that I, that's what people are dealing with grief mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now. Okay. And if I could help anyone move through that process, I'm happy to share what I felt. It's a, okay. it's a tough one for me to read, but I want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's called Missing You. And it was to my mother. When you first passed away, I wondered in what form you'd reappear. It really didn't matter the form. I just longed to have you near. I first thought about the rainbow and the spectrum of its color, but your many shades of love could outshine it like none other. The pretty petals of the rose were the next to enter my mind. Their sweet smell and the softness could mask your likeness anytime. I considered a lovely butterfly as it flew above your vault. Like you, it had freedom in flight and its spirit couldn't be caught. I listened to various music to remind me of your voice. Though lovely, none could suit me. Your sound is my one of choice. I looked for you in others who, who projected your demeanor. I couldn't find satisfaction because your presence is so much sweeter. So I've come to the conclusion that I'd rather have you in my heart and I'll see you later in heaven when from this earth I depart. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it touches others. Yeah, it certainly touches my heart. Just my mother's birthday is in January and she's been gone for a number of years. Yes. And um, so January is always kind of that kind of month, you know. Mm -hmm. After the holidays and mm -hmm. feeling that. Yes. Absolutely. My daughter, my daughter had a friend who lost her mother during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And she gave her one of my books and I wrote a special note in there for her. And I hope, I hope that it's helping her. Good. Yes. Yeah, I, I do believe that writing poetry about those we've lost does help. I agree. It's, it's a whole process of working through a lot of things. And yes. Appreciating and bringing out the joys that they brought to our Ex lives. Exactly. Celebrating them. If you, mm -hmm. what I found um, when I'm in pain and, and grieving is that if I stop and think about the essence of that person and if I can capture it or share stories about that person with their loved ones, it helps. It helps mm -hmm. me. And I it know really it does. helps them. Yes. So really I think does. we're on we're on the right path, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I recently had a, a story published that I wrote about my father. Um, my sister and I went to be with him in his last days, and yes, um, I, it was called the last haircut. And I gave him his last haircut wow. before he passed. And wow. so I wrote the story about that and all the memories of how things were growing up included into that story. And wow. it was it was a good process, Powerful. good process for me. Mm-hmm. You know, to work mm-hmm. I still get chill bumps thinking about when I wrote that story. I do too. I feel <laughs> it and I haven't read it, so I'd love to read your poem. <laughs> the last haircut. The last hair. I have to share that with you. I'll send it to you. Okay, please do. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So um are you going to do another book? You said this is the, the collection that you have, but you have some more poems out there. So are you going to do another one? I believe I have to. Um, In addition to the poems I already had, I've written so many poems since the spring. I'm I'm now focused and the words just won't stop. They won't stop. It feels great. I'm on fire. I want to keep writing. I don't know how soon I would release another book, uh, but as I go, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of what the next volume might look like. Mm -hmm. I'm also considering uh, contributing to other books, maybe other um, anthology books, collaborative Mm -hmm. books. Happy to do that. Yeah. I wish I would have caught you just a little bit ago. I I know. I was working on that. Too late. (laughs) Oh, and I've got one that would have been awesome. So if you you find space or if you do another one, please keep me in mind. I'm thinking of making this an annual thing. So it oh. uh, depends, depending on how this all goes and it's going yes. well so far, I may be doing another one. Oh, I'd love to participate. All of my my books um, when, or that I'm working on, I've got some in process, have to do with the heart and soul. So it's um, mm. whatever I'm working on has to have either heart or soul or something to the effect uh-huh. in the title of the book. I love that. I love that. My this year, um, my niece, Marquita Myrick, asked, what's your word for the year? And Mm -hmm. I never select a word, Mm -hmm. you know. And of course, you you shared my favorite quote, my own, which is every word shared is an opportunity to love. Mm -hmm. So um, this year I chose the word love because it's what matters. It is what matters. It's what matters. Yes. I think my word this year would be hope. Hope. Yeah. Yes. Actually working on a collaboration with another writer um, who I've already collected his poetry. Now I'm going to write mine in alignment mm-hmm. with his. It's mm-hmm. going to be a book about hope. So. A book of hope. Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting. I look forward to that. (laughs) Are you doing anything in particular to observe this month? It's Black History Month. Black History Month. I haven't scheduled anything, but it's ongoing for me. It is. Yes. Especially since I feel that in my early life, I was deprived of the knowledge and awareness of all of the Black contributors um, to this country and the world. So uh, for our grandchildren, we like to interact and share um, who our heroes are. And these are everyday heroes too, not Mm -hmm. only the ones that have done great things. I believe everyone is a hero. Everyone Mm -hmm. has a story. And what I do is encourage, I always encouraged my children to write. I encourage my grandchildren to write. Mm -hmm. And they are beside themselves knowing that their grandmother, their Nana has published a book. um, And they said they want to write. So I've encouraged that. Yes, they they want to write. Right. Well, the inauguration certainly was uh, an impetus for wanting to write too, I think. Take my breath away. 
Oh my goodness. Amanda Gorman is phenomenal. Yeah. And she has, in those few moments, she has lifted poetry mm -hmm. to the level it deserves to be. Yeah. Yeah. Poetry makes a difference. Yeah. And I Amanda Gorman, bumps. yes, yeah. I get chill bumps. <laughs> She's amazing. She She's is. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm happy you know. for the poetry community. I'm happy for the world now mm -hmm. to embrace poetry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, one of the things I'm doing for Black History Month is I started out with the first day I had a poem that I wrote. I, I wrote a dedication to Gwendolyn Brooks and then I took one of her poems and then I wrote a poem to kind of like respond to her poem, kind of a conjunction oh. with her poem. So I posted, you know, that on my on my blog today. So mm, I yeah. love that. I'm gonna have to see it. <laughs> so each day idea. I'm gonna I have some in my archives I'm gonna pull up and then I'm gonna start getting a little bit more creative and <laughs> talk to some more writing. <laughs> I like the idea of responding to one of their poems. I like that. Yeah. I've done that a few times with just I try to get the flavor of what they're doing and then write something, you know, it can't be them. It can't be as good as theirs, but it's still, you know, a nice challenge and it gets mm -hmm. me connected to that poet. Yes. What I've done recently is I'm seeking out new poets or poets that I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. Black poet, black poets. Um, um, Jericho Brown. I'm sure you've heard of him because everyone's name. heard of him. I have uh, his book, yeah. Yes, I, so do I. I was moved uh, by his writing, and that's what I want to do. I want to I want to read poetry by people I hadn't heard from before, mm -hmm. including people of all colors. But this month specifically, mm -hmm. I'll focus on black poets. Yeah. yeah. And no doubt some ideas for poems will come to you as well. You're right. You're right. In, in April, I think it's in April, um, there's a project where you read a poetry book every day. And then, um, so I would post each book that I read. But if I read just a certain number of poems, I counted as a read because, I mean, some yes. of them were pretty lengthy. Some are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's when I worked on Jericho Browns and different ones last year. So I'm going to try to get in on that project again this year. Yes. So. Great. So do you have another poem to read for us? Yes, I do. This, this poem is called Harmony. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a fun one. I wrote this poem for my husband. Okay. As a gift. It was a Christmas gift one year. And he is... Um, a singer. He writes. Um, he he's very good. He arranges music. He's he's very nice. kind of a music engineer. Um, mm -hmm. He um, was the music director for the male course at our church in Boulder, mm -hmm. Colorado. And so one year we decided to give gifts rather than material gifts. Let's be creative and give each other something that's super meaningful. So this is the poem that I gave to Jim Johns. Okay. Harmony. Find a place for me in your music and I'll always be by your side. If you see me in the lyrics, then you'll feel me in the vibe. My love flows through the melody, erasing tension from your mind. The rhythm of our relationship is the best you'll ever find. Know my heart with every drum beat, my cries with trebles thrill. Percussion sounds reflect my spirit and mimic my free will. The horns blow out my passion when anger utters from the bass. Through the keyboards and the strings, I try to show my grace. 
equalize the things that bother you about any of the sounds above and synthesize my intentions with the music and song you love. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. He loved it. I was just saying, how did he respond? <laughs> he loved it. He thought it was oh, pretty special. Yes, yes, indeed. He's my one of my biggest fans, of course. <laughs> well, that, that that's great. <laughs> that's how it should be. Now, I, I have my fam my family are my fans, but sometimes they don't listen to all these things that I do. So sometimes when we're in the car, I'll turn my podcast on. <laughs> so they have to listen to it. <laughs> Captive audience. <laughs> Oh, here now for the turn of the podcast. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. <laughs> well, Zan, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you'd like to share? Um, let's see. I'll there are a couple of things I'll share. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't say this earlier, but my book, Poetic Forecast, has um, a page at the end of the book for book clubs. So if you're a book club looking for a new book to enjoy, a book of poetry, pick up Poetic Forecast. It has book club prompts, questions that will help oh, you wow. enjoy the book in depth. And you know, there's we're we're all on lockdown, but virtually, I might even extend myself to join a book club or or talk to your book club if I'm invited. Um, so that's the one thing. The second thing is I do uh, want to encourage people to um, pick up next month Voices of the 21st Century. Uh, this book, I am in awe of the company of these women authors. It's a beautiful book. The stories are amazing. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm definitely going to have to check that out and I'll have to talk to you about that book club idea. Okay, I look forward <laughs> to that. I do, I do. Well, Zan, thank you so much for coming in, on our show today and I wish you nothing but the best. Happy anniversary, happy uh, Valentine's, you know. Thank you so much, life. Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Take care now. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks.